270 degree turn. Turning on the heel, straighten the arm, weight comes back, down, to the finish. Okay, we're going to go through the Chen Pan Ling drill. Uh, it incorporates almost the entire first section. That's the important thing. Almost the entire first section of the Chen Pan Ling long Tai Chi form. But the beauty is that it's circular. You can keep doing it again and again. And it does that by omitting the opening move and closing moves. So the opening moves and closing moves are cut out so that it loops. Let's just see how we, how we start. Unlike the standard Tai Chi form which begins here, this just begins at this point. This, this uh, finger should be at your, what they call in yoga, your third eye. This thumb should be pointed at your Dantian. You're completely relaxed, you breathe out, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. From here, you're going to make a small step. When I say small step, it's a half step. It's just to there, and it, its goal is to turn your body. So, one. Now the back of the hand will come down. And as the back of the hand comes down, this hand comes across. And turns. If we have a look at it from another angle, I'm going to go one. Back of the hand, there, there. If you stand here for a minute and go one, you should do a few of these just to get used to it. In fact, I often teach this. One, two, three, four. One, try that a few times. Three, four. So, from the beginning. This is the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Important thing to remember, when we're doing this, we are turning the back of the hand so that it's not doing what I call dead arm. And that's this rule. This is for a minute. One, two, three, four, five. Same movement. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Step a long stance and press. Now, normally, there are three more. View from the side, you can see me. One, two, three, four, five. Normally there are two more. That's a three one, two, three total. And we're going to omit the second two because it's one of the concessions we have to make to make this circular. So we're only going to do one. Are you ready? And one, two. Notice how my weight is on my left, left leg. I step, weight transfers to my right. I look to that side, the hands come together. I turn, this ten, leg turns and cuts that, and I turn it sideways. And from here, let's try it again. One, weights on this leg, two, transfers to that leg, then three, it stays on that leg but turns into cat stance. The knee at this point is pointing in the direction of your opponent, your, your, el your elbow is pointing, okay? And your fingers, or not your fingers, but this part of your hand is pointing forwards. And now when we step, you do brush knee. This hand must go round the knee, 
this hand slowly straightens at the wrist, or bends at the wrist, I should say, not straightens. Follow the game. Shoulder width apart. One, two, three, four, five. And instead of doing two more, we're going to do carry tiger home to now. We're going to bring the weight back. Turn on the heel. This hand's already starting to move up. It moves up to the ear as you move weight back to this leg. Once again, next one, two. Now this leg is more or less free to move across a bit. Three. Move from the side. Do the opening. There, brush knee. One, see how my hands part? By the time I finish there, it comes to the ear and turn around. So once again, the whole thing. One, two, three, four, five. point where weights will come back to 50-50 and you will do the play the loop posture. That's 50-50, don't bring it too far back, don't leave it forwards, it's exactly 50-50. And the point it reaches 50-50, the hands are compressing in. And now, as they compress in, they turn over, left palm up, right palm down, and you continue the weight all the way back till your hand reaches the thigh, turns over, and now presses, makes a V shape towards your chin. As it reaches that V point, it passes and turns over like a cloud that's changing. You pass about 20, 10, 15 degrees, something like that, and come back, hands in like a sideways T, back to here. Don't turn the body completely sideways. Keep the hips facing that way. And it comes around, press, back, and down, round, the T again. This time, I'm going to turn on the foot, and come up, we'll do the detail in a second, and the corner there. We just go from here, sideways. When you change directions, it also confuses you, so it's good practice. Okay, so one, everyone try. One, weight back, two, three, four, five, turn, carry tiger hump and arm. 50-50 posture to play the lute and immediately into grass bird's tail. Press. Pass. Back. And press. Back. And now from here, same thing as uh, sideways T, but this time turn on the hand. And when we turn on the hand, we turn the foot right in as much as possible. This hand will do like a scooping C letter. And the hand, this hand will stay there and then stay on top. And then off into the corner. Okay. Let's do it facing this way. From the beginning. One. Two. Bird's tail. Pass. Back. This is all part of that sequence. Kung Wu Jia. It's the Kung, and this is the Tan. 
Now this is called single whip. From here, this hand will raise. It will raise above your, just above your forehead, right? In line with your, here is line, in line with your forehead. And as you step into that corner, your hand will stay at about 90 degrees. Over here. Open. I open, I open the hand and bend the knee and open hip. And close. At this point, this right hand needs to be further ahead of the left hand. How do you finish there? Back, turn, weight comes back, round, and down. It's a quite a complex sequence. Let's see it again. Open, and again, you start with the back heel. You're going to try it, back hip, sorry. Back hip, open, both hands, close, back. Now, this will proceed to there, elbow stops, hand finishes, weight comes back, round and down, and, and from there, we are at the very beginning, one, two, three, four, and that's why it's such a useful drill. Press. Pass. Press. Single whip. explain as you're doing it. I'll explain here, you can take the place there. You see the whip opening like a flower, so when the hip opens, the hip takes the, the, uh, the, the body movement, so everything leaves from the hips, opens, and the knee has to sort of uh, uh, bend slightly the right knee, bringing it back, and from here, Rather than stopping and being static, this slides through. So if you're carrying a big ball or something like that, I like to think of rotating the ball around here, opening, pushing down, and then from here, stepping up. It's like having a ball being pushed under the ocean. The ball rises itself, the buoyancy basically pushes you up. So the hands lift, and the body lifts at the same time. So thinking about the dantian raising, the hands raise with the dantian and bring the ball up with you. Thanks, Andy. Okay, good. So let's try that again. This time we're gonna do the whole sequence twice, facing that way. Okay, are you ready? White stalk displays wing. In two, brush knee. into carry tiger onto mountain into play the lute and this is entire sequence begins grass birds tail Stalk displays wing. Carry tiger home to mount. Play the loop begins. Grass birds tail. 
this is fine. The retreat is blue. This is G. single whip. Two seventy degree turn. Turning on the heel, straighten the arm, weight comes back, down, to the finish. What would you say are some key important detail then? The turns, particularly for me when you're turning around, moving always got to avoid standing in a straight line. Right. Thinking about stepping across a line. And that would be particularly in uh, the single whip movement. Yes. So can you demonstrate the single whip movement facing uh, the mirror? Yeah. So single whip from here. Arm, arm, two, and here. Here. Um, There's a temptation to reach uh, without looking, so blindly. If you do that, you can effectively land, you can see where my heels are, they basically land um, uh, in a line, as though we were balancing on a tightrope. What I like to think of, and the way I teach this, is coming around, the hips start to move first, and because the hips are moving, all the other parts of the body start to move, you can actually see where you're actually moving to. You can picture a line if you want to do that, with your right heel is where that line is, stepping across that line, toe, yes. heel, heel, and then kicking the rear heel out. Kicking the rear heel out. And right. making sure that that kicks out, hips square, shoulders square. Lovely, lovely. One detail I'd like to point out here is, it's very important, is when you're doing single whip, do keep that hand on top. It's very tempting, I've often slipped it under. And the reason is for the application. We won't even get into that now, but this hand should stay here. It stays in, in constant contact. One. And now from there. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, another detail then, perhaps. Uh, the turning of the body. So, okay. and all of this where we're, particularly in Graf Sparrow's tail, right. um, we're here, we've come from further here, Cowie Tiger Hunter Mountain. Again, there's that step across. Oh, yes. Step across so that your feet are, hips are square with the direction you want to go, shoulders are square, um, and you carry it in your brush knee. From here, there, one. This turn again with this open hip, the hips are leading it. Knees. Knee basically is preventing the body from turning any further than it needs to. So if the hip and knee are in tandem, that's about as far as I want to be. Yeah. Rather than rather than sideways, sideways and twisting, twisting the torso. And you can look at me sideways, but it doesn't change it. Look at me, for instance. That doesn't change the fact you are now completely balanced in that particular posture. So that's that's really not good. So the way you did it before, Andrew. So, so from uh, brush knee 50-50, um, playing the, the lute, yep. drawing back, that's as far as I need to go. Exactly. Training. Go back to that note movement. And you can see you're quite stable, relatively stable compared to, and that's 
approaching in the weakest possible angle, which I can calculate by simply drawing a straight line between your heel and cutting it, but perpendicular. So I know that's your weakest angle, but you are weak at an angle there, which made it almost impossible to have any kind of stability if it's overturned. So there, there. Same applies on the other side. Um, yes. So we've come down, frame the throat, um, pause. We go past again. The uh, extent of your turn is limited by the, the left hip, effectively. Exactly. Yeah. Bang. That's it. You could go all the way around, and then twisting the torso, but my, I can feel my balance is already going with that. So pass, coming back, same again, limiting by the hip into G, and then coming back into R over Lou, and then. Same again, limiting by the hip. Not too far. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Pun G R. Yeah. All right. Thanks.